Hello everybody. Today I'm going to take you through my process I prefer to use for molecular modeling and rigging. This is ibuprofen. I did a Google search for ibuprofen.pdb and the search results led me to the protein data bank and I found a file that contains ibuprofen inside of a larger complex of molecules. After looking further on the protein data bank web page, I was able to isolate what chain the ibuprofen molecule occupies in the data bank file. And this is useful information, um, particularly when opened in uh, Discovery Studio. It's a free download. And by clicking on this little tab right here, you get to expose the molecules hierarchy. I'm going to fast forward the video. The basic idea here is you get to select your chains you don't want and delete them and display the molecule that you do want and control the different parameters for it. You can make your ball and stick larger and smaller. Uh, you can change the way that the molecules are colored. And then when that's all done, you export this molecule and the only option available here is a VRML1 which requires a version of Cinema 4D uh, 11.5 or earlier to open the VRML1 file. And one of the things to note with this workflow is that there's a double amount of material tags on these primitives so if you go through and delete this row of material tags, it will reveal the colors of the elements. Then save the file as a Cinema 4D file, and then I open it up in a newer version of Cinema. So what I want to do is show you a really cool trick of how to select just one of the edges of each of these cylinders. So what we need to do is we need to make a copy of our bonds our cylinders and I like to paste them above the original molecule group them and then hide the original molecule select all the cylinders and then adjust their radius and their scale and their number of divisions like this then use the connect and delete option to convert these cylinders into a single polygon object. Next we use the connect generator to weld the two separate cylinders together. Go into UV edit mode and then select two UV points and then command click on the edge mode to magically connect these two points of every cylinder into an edge in between these two points. In standard mode, select all of the object's polygon faces and then use the move along normals command to shrink down your cylinders to a very thin model. And in edge mode, run the edge to spline command to convert our previously selected edges into a spline object. And so now we have our spline object and the splines are perfectly centered uh, in the position of the old cylinders. Next, we want to select all of the spline object's points and then run a shrink selection command. And this leaves only the points that are uh, in the middle of the spline selected. And that way we can delete these points. And we end up with a spline object that has one point and it is centered in the middle of each of the atoms. We can then uh, run a sweep on these splines to create our bonds. And the nice thing about this is that we can 
using the sweep object and our um, our spline object we can adjust the number of divisions and the taper of the bonds. Turn back on the original molecule with the atoms. Let's change the colors of our atoms so they're a little more visible for this next step where we're going to change our atoms into cloner objects. With our white hydrogen atoms selected we'll go to the MoGraph tracer and we turn off the option of trace by vertices and then we select connect all objects to generate our spline and then we collapse the tracer object. Rename the spline to hydrogens. Make a copy of the hydrogen primitive and then we're going to change the scale of this primitive to 1 to work with the cloner and then we'll adjust the radius to match the original hydrogen radius. Next we make a cloner for each of the elements starting with the hydrogen and the cloner will be set to the object mode and in the object mode we're going to target the hydrogen spline that we just created using the tracer. Next we're going to select the hydrogen spheres that were in the original molecule and then delete them. Next, enable the hydrogen cloner we just made. And now with our cloner we can add a whole host of effectors like the random effector and when we set this effector to a world space noise such as uh, turbulence and hit the play button uh, we can adjust the amount of turbulence and get a real nice Brownian motion. Then we repeat the process and create a cloner for the carbon atoms and then another cloner for the oxygen atoms. So I'm going to fast forward here. And now our ibuprofen molecule is positioned using splines for the bonds and also for the positioning of the cloners. And that will allow us to deform the splines and then deform the molecule while maintaining the nice spherical atoms and also the connection of the bonds to the atoms. Group the splines and then move the random effector inside the group and change its mode to a deformer. Disable the effector in the cloners and then turn on your random effector and hit play to see what happens. What you might notice here is that all of the atoms are moving but the bond spline is not being deformed and this is due to the fact that inside of our sweep object we're using an instance of the spline and the deformation is not being translated to the instance. Using a Mo spline instead of an instance solves the problem temporarily. When we re-enable our random deformer it now acts on all the points along the spline. And the solution to this problem is to use two most splines. And the first most spline will only have a point at the start and the end so that the deformer cannot work on the points that are in between. And then we'll target that first most spline with a second most spline that we can add divisions to and that isn't affected by the deformer or any other effectors and that'll work to give us 
just our taper and our subdivisions. We move the molecule by moving the grouping of splines and we can also add in traditional deformers into this group to bend the molecule. A delay effector in spring mode added to the cloners and the top level Mo spline can give a nice springy motion to the molecule. And to stabilize the rotations of the bonds during this delay effector, making a rail of the original spline just a copy and moving it off in space to the left or the right will stabilize the rotations of the atoms. And so in conclusion we can add a series of deformers to make our molecule have a little bit more life and have some fun with this. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Thanks.